ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان الاصدق الكلام كلام الله والخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بضه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد عباد الله following up from last week's khutbah we mentioned regarding those people that allah azza wa jalla loves and we mentioned those actions which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so in this khutbah bi idhnillah to carry on from that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us that they are a group of people and these group of people they are ahlul quran and they are ahlullah wa khasatu they are individuals that are a group of people and they are the people of quran they are the people of allah azza wa jal and they are his chosen ones so inshallah we're going to elaborate upon that bi idhnillah taken from those who Allah loves now moving on to this special group of people that are upon the face of the earth and the reason that we remind ourselves with this because we have to try to strive to be from that group from that ahl al khasa wa an anas ibn malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna lillahi ahlin min an nas Anas ibn Malik, he says that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that verily from amongst mankind there are a group of people and they are the people of Allah azza wa jal. So as usually whenever the companions they would hear this, the, the first thing that they wanted to know who are these type of people, who are they? فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ man whom a message of allah who are these people and the ulama say that the reason that they were diligent to know because they wanted to be from those individuals so then they take information from the messenger of allah to find out how are they what do they do so they can strive to be from them so the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said hum ahlul quran they are the people of quran the people of quran as the mufassirun and the ulama they have mentioned that the people that memorize the quran the people that live by the quran the people that act upon the quran and what the quran calls to ahlullah messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then went on to mention not only are they referred to as the people of quran they are the people of allah and an extra emphasis wa khasatuhu and they are his chosen ones that hadith is collected in the muslim of imam ahmed and ibn majah shaykh albani rahimahullah ta'ala authenticates that narration my brothers and my sisters the quran and what is connected to the quran is sharf the quran in itself is sharf is honor nobility and anything that is connected to it allah azza wa jal has made that honorable 
Listen to what the ulama they say. Al-Quran huwa ashrafu kitabin anzalahu Allah azza wa jal. The Quran is the most noble of all of the books that Allah azza wa jal has sent down. The Quran. The most noble, most virtuous book. That's one. Ala ashraf al-malak wa huwa Jibreel. And the one that brought it down is the most noble of all of the angels. وَفِي أَشْرَفِ الشَّهْرِ وَهُوَ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ And it was revealed in the most noble of months. That month is Ramadan. وَفِي أَشْرَفِ اللَّيْلَةِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And it was revealed in the most noble of all nights. The night of Laylat al-Qadr. في أشرف البقعة على الأرض. And it was revealed in the most sacred part of the world. There is no sacred Ard piece of part of the earth that is more noble than Mecca. Referring to Mecca. This is where it came down. Look at the chain. Everything connected to the Quran, Allah has made it the most noble. And Allah Azza wa Jal revealed it in the most noble of languages. The Arabic language. And it was revealed from the upon the greatest of mankind. And that is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Illa khayru ummatin. وهي أمة خاتب النبيين صلوات ربي وسلام عليه and it came down to a people which is the greatest of the nations the nations of the final messenger the seal of all the prophets Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم anybody of understanding will reflect upon that that the Quran look how Allah عز وجل has made it sharaf, everything connected with the Quran. This gives us that hears to want to be from the people of Quran, to strive to be from that. Ahlul Quran, they are the ones that Allah Azza wa Jal gives them sharaf, wa rifah, wa al makana in the Rabbil Alameen. Allah Azza wa Jal. For Ahl al-Qur'an, they have a special nobility and a special station. Listen to some of these stories. I'll give you now a narration that will make you reflect that the one that doesn't have much, even if he doesn't have much, even if he's amongst the poorest, but if he has Qur'an and he lives by the Qur'an, then what Allah Azza wa Jal does to such a person and how he raises him. There's a narration in Sahih Muslim where Nafi' ibn Abdul Harith, Lucky Umar, Radi Allahu Ta'ala An, Bi Usfan. There is a narration where Nafi' he met Umar bin Khattab in Usfan. Fakala Umar, Manista Malta Allah Ahlil Wadi. Nafi' was the one that was appointed to be responsible over the people of Mecca. Ahlul Wadi, referring to the people of the valley, meaning Mecca. So he was appointed as a governor over Mecca. But when Umar saw him in Usfan, then he said to him, so who have you left in charge? Who have you left in charge? Listen to this. He said, Faqal ibn Abza. I have left an individual by the name or is known as Ibn Azma, uh, 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 Abza. So he said, Man Ibn uh, Abza. So Umar bin Khattab said, Who is this? Who is this Ibn Abza that you have appointed to be in charge of the whole of Mecca? And listen to what his jawab was. Huwa min mawalina. He's a free slave. A freed slave from amongst our freed slaves. Then Umar said, you have left a free slave to be in charge of the people of Mecca. And then listen to his jawab. Nafi' faqala nafi' 
إِنَّهُ قَارِئٌ لِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He is a person. قَارِئٌ here meaning he is a person that has understanding of the Qur'an, knowledge of the Qur'an, deep knowledge of the Qur'an, hafiz al-Qur'an, lives by the legislations of the Qur'an. So this was his first introduction. And then he went on to say, وَإِنَّهُ عَالِمٌ بِالْفَرَائِضِ and he is an alim when it comes to the knowledge of inheritance. Upon hearing that, listen to what Umar's jawab was. فَقَالَ عُمَرْ أَمَّا إِنَّ نَبِيَّكُمْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ Verily, your prophet, صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ He said the following, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ بِهَاذَا الْكِتَابَ أَقْوَامًا وَيَضَعُ بِهِ آخَرِينَ Indeed, I, your messenger, he said, Verily, with this Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal will raise people with this Qur'an. And with the same Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal will then cause individuals to be low. This Qur'an, إِمَّا لَكْ أَوْ So this is what Umar said. When Umar realized regarding his knowledge of the Qur'an, how Quran was close to him and he was a person of knowledge. Then him being a slave or a slave of old or him being from the poorest individuals in the eyes of Ahlul Khair, he was from the greatest of individuals because they know the qima of such a person. Because that Quran, it raises individuals. Isma'u ila hadithi Buraida, alladhi fi musnadi Ahmada. وحسنه الحافظ ابن حجر وصحه شيخ الباني رحمه الله تعالى في سلسلة الصحيح صحيحة. Let me your ears to this following narration, my brothers and my sisters, regarding the hadith of Burayda, which is collected in the Mustad of Imam Ahmed, and Al Hafiz ibn Hajar holds it to be Hassan, and Sheikh Al Bani likewise رحمه الله authenticated this narration, where the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said إن القرآن يلقى صاحبه يوم القيامة هنا ينشق عنه قبره on the day of judgment or on the day of resurrection when the graves will be split open then the Quran will meet his companion meeting his companion meaning we know from other textual evidences the Quran that you recite the Quran that you learn, then that comes on the day of judgment and speaks. So in this narration, the Quran that will come and meet his companion is the one that recited it and lived by it. He will come when the graves are open. He will come as a pale man. So then this pale man will say, do you recognize me? He will say, I do not recognize you. I do not recognize you. Then the Quran will say, Ana al Quran. I am your companion, the Quran. I am the one that made you thirsty during the days. And I am the one that calls you to stay awake at night. Then the hadith goes on to mention regarding every tajir, every trader will receive what he puts forth. Then regarding this trade, then it will be said to him, for yu'ta al-mulk bi yamini wa khulda bi shimali. Then he will be given his kingdom in his right hand. And eternity will be given unto his left hand. And on his head, there will be a crown, a crown of nobility that will be placed on his head. And his parents, his two parents, they will be given two garments. 
and the hadith it mentions these two garments have never been seen before and ahl al-ard will never be able to afford such garments his parents will be dressed with these garments and then the parents then they will say for yaqulan bima kusina hadha how come we are clothed with such garments for you call bi akhdi waladukuma al quran la ilaha illallah because of your son and your child because of your child of what he took by the way of quran learned it lived by it, called to it because of your child the ulama they have said that look the fadl that you give your children or whoever you teach quran comes back to you so then the hadith then goes on to mention ثم يقال له اقرا واسعد في درج الجنه وغرفها then it will be said to him recite recite and ascend up into the heavens up into the heavens and into the chambers of the heavens and he will continue to rise as well as while he is reciting and whether that recitation is slow or fast he will continue to rise this is why our brothers and our sisters that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said khayrukum man ta'allam alquran wa 'allamahu rawahu al-bukhari messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said the best of you are those who learn the quran and then teach it may allah azza wa jalla make us from them may allah make us us and our children from those that learn the quran act upon it and then teach it amen wa sallallahu wa barik ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wal aqibatu lil muttaqin wa la udwana illa ala zalimin wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taslima al mazida amma ba'du subhanallah after hearing such textual evidences regarding the people of quran we can only beg allah azza wa jalla to make us from them and now we hurt the heart to know that we have just wasted many of our years many long portions of our life being far from that book the book that that gives us nobility that book that gives us guidance and that book that gives us stability we can only beg allah azza wa jalla that whatever remains from our lives that he does give us the blessing and the tawfiq to be able to be from those who strive to be from ahlul quran may allah make us from them amen wan abdullah ibn umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal alaykum bil quran fata'allamuh wa 'allamuhu abna'akum fa innakum anhu tas'alun bihi wa bihi tujzun abdullah ibn umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he said it is upon you the quran it is upon you the quran learn it and then teach your children learn it and then teach your children for indeed you will be questioned regarding it you will be questioned regarding this quran and likewise you will be rewarded regarding this quran whatever you put forth by way of how you acted upon the quran is what you will see back on that great day then Abdullah ibn Umar he went on to say wa kafa bihi wa'idhan the Quran is sufficient the admonition for those individuals liman aqal for those individuals that comprehend those people of understanding then the Quran is a sufficient warning for us the Quran is a sufficient giver of glad tidings as well also we have the statement of ibn mas'ud and i've moved on to some of the athar of the sahaba because the sahaba based upon the athar you know how they were with quran and you know how they understood the previous narrations that we have mentioned which caused them to live by the quran and say the following things ibn mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala an he said inna ma hadhi al-qulub aw'iyah verily these hearts hearts of mankind they are vessels they are vessels fashghiluha bil quran so fill your vessels with quran our hearts they are like vessels so we need to fill it with quran 
ولا تشغلوها بغيره and do not fill your vessels meaning the heart with an other than it do not fill it with other than it the quran is the best thing that we can fill our vessels and our hearts why because of the following and ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal dhamana allah liman ittaba al quran la yudhillu fi ad dunya wa la yashqa fi al akhirah that ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed listen to these words allah has guaranteed that the one that follows the quran he will not go astray and he will not grieve he will not be saddened in the hereafter he will not go astray in this life and he will not be from those who grieve and who are wretched in the hereafter then after saying this he brought the proof thumma tala qawluhu ta'ala then he brought the statement of allah azza wa jal fa man ittaba'a hudaya fala yudhillu wa la yashqa and whomsoever follows my guidance quran is the guidance of allah azza wa jal then he will not go astray and he will not grieve may allah azza wa jal make us from those who follow his guidance amen may allah azza wa jal make us from those who are guided and may allah not make us from those who grieve we seek refuge in allah from those who are from the ones that grieve so finally i leave you alhamdulillah that is sufficient of what we have mentioned so then we make the dua and we say barakallahu li wa lakum fil quran al azim may allah azza wa jal bless me and bless you with this tremendous quran ونفعني واياكم بما فيه من الايات وذكر الحكيم اما يا الله عز وجل benefit me and may he benefit you from the tremendous verses and the reminder and the wisdom that this book it carries and i also humbly make dua اسال الله لي ولكم and i make dua for myself and for you and يجعل من اهل الخاصته that allah عز وجل will make me and you from his chosen ones aquli qawli hadha astaghfiru li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim